Okay, so in, in the last uh, video, we just talked about the difference between algebra and calculus. Um, algebra talks about a specific point, what's going on at a specific location on our graph. Um, with calculus, we're going to look at what's around it. So that's the idea of a limit. A limit is um, what is happening around a specific point, and does the limit actually exist? So in this example right here, we have a point at x is 2, y is 1, so this is our ordered pair 2, 1, okay? That's our algebra. It's what's going on right at that point. But also at 2, there's an open circle up here, which means there's nothing that exists there, but we see that there's a graph that's all around that point, okay? So as I'm looking at limits, I'm looking at how is it approaching? What is this value approaching? So when I, when I put my fingers on my graph, if I follow the graph, you can see that my fingers are approaching the exact same point, okay? So if my fingers are coming together, right, it's coming together at y is 3, so that means I have a limit, a limit as x approaches 2 of my function f of x equals the value 3. So this, val this, this um, function does have a limit. It is approaching a certain value, right? Again, I don't care what's going on at that value. I just want to know what's happening around the value. But here, the algebra says that at 2, my value is 1. Okay, so this is the calculus version. This is what's going around, what's happening around the point. This is my algebra version. Okay, so algebra only cares about what is actually equaling the function at 2. So when x is 2, y is 1. That's the algebra. This one is calculus. What's it approaching? So again, as my fingers come together, I'm following my graph. My fingers are coming together. They're heading towards 3. They don't reach 3, right? They're just heading towards 3. So my fingers are coming together at y is 3. So I do have a limit. So there's certain criteria that has to happen for a limit to exist, okay? Let's try another one. So let's say we had, let's say we had uh, this graph, okay? So here's my graph. Here is, at, oh, this pin doesn't work. I gotta remember to toss that. Here at negative one, there is a vertical line. This is called an asymptote, if you remember that. And then let's say over here at four, two, three, four, there's also another asymptote. Okay, so up here, I have a graph that's coming in and it turns and goes up. Down here, I have a graph. It comes up, crosses, and then comes here. And then over here, I have another graph that comes in and goes down, okay? So we have three different uh, regions in this graph. But if I said, what's the limit as x approaches negative 1 of my function, what is that? Well, it depends. Because if I'm approaching negative 1, so um, there's nothing coming over from this side, right? This side, I'm approaching negative 1 from the right. This one, I'm approaching negative 1 from the left. And I'm going to two different places. If I'm coming in from the left, that means I'm coming in on the negative side. So that's what the little negative means up at the top. It looks like in an in a exponent position. So if this says, I want to approach negative 1 from the left, so I'm coming in, I'm approaching negative 1 is right here, I'm coming in from the left. Well, if you notice, it glides right along that asymptote, and so it will glide continually. So it's approaching infinity, going up, 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 up. So remember with a limit, <clears throat> the limit is always the y value. 
So you can see from my arrow, it's going to continue all the way up and just continue on. If I have the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right, from the positive side of my function, I come in, it's approaching from the positive side, but this one is continuing to go down, so it is heading towards negative infinity. So you have right-hand limits and you have left-hand limits, okay? They can be two different things. Right-hand limit, I can approach one place. Left-hand limit, I can approach, from, uh, approach another place. The only time a limit exists is if I can approach from both sides, okay? Like that first one, I can approach from both sides, my fingers head to the same value, then I know my limit exists. Let me show you another, another example. Um, in this business calculus class, we're not going to deal with inf infinite um, or negative infinity um, values because we're looking at a very specific um, aspect of calculus. So let's look at this one. So we have, here's our graph, and I have a parabola comes in. And I have an open circle here, <clears throat> and this is going to be 3, and a closed circle here, and this is going to be at also 3, and this is at negative 3. Okay, so here's our graph. Graphically, finding limits is not too bad. It's actually just being able to follow what the graph is doing. If the limit exists, that means I can approach from both sides, okay? I can approach from both sides. So the notation is the limit, that's L-I-M, as x approaches 3 of my function, whatever that function is, okay? So I see here at x is 3, there's an open circle here, there's a closed circle here, okay? That means there's nothing that exists here but I do have a value at 3 here. But I don't care about what it equals. I care about what is it approaching. So again, I'm going to follow my graph with my fingers. If my fingers are coming together at the same place, there's a 1 here. If my fingers come together at the same place, that means the limit does exist. So in this case, the limit exists at y equals 1. Okay, because I'm able to come from both sides, all right? Now, what if I said the limit of my function as x approaches 3 from the left side? Okay, so I'm coming in from the left. So remember that negative means I'm coming in from the negative side. So this is the negative side. I don't care about what's happening on the right side. All I care about is what's happening on the left. So I'm looking at my left-handed limit. So I come in. I follow my graph from the left, and it approaches 1. All right, the limit of my function as x approaches 3 from the right side. So now I don't care about this side. All I care about, here's 3, I'm coming in on the right, I'm coming in on the positive side. My finger is approaching 1 again. Okay, so any time you can come in from the left and the right and you are approaching the same value, then the limit does exist, okay? There is a value um, that the limit is approaching, all right? Now, what does the, the function actually equal at 3? So the function at 3 does equal 3, so that's my solid point. So again, here's my algebra. That's the algebra question being able to read the graph, and this is my calculus. What is the value approaching, okay? All right, let's try another one. So being able to read a graph and know whether a limit exists or not is not too bad. It's just following your fingers, making sure your fingers are doing what it's supposed to. Okay, so here we go. Let me give a different example here. All right, so here, um, let's just do this easy. Here's one, here's one, two, three. 
So my graph is approaching 1. So I come in from the left. Here I come in from the right. And I have a point right here. Okay. Now, again, for it to be a function, I can't overlap, right? So I have nothing here, something here, nothing here. So I'm good. It is a function. All right. So let's start asking some questions. What is the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of my function? So I come in here. Here's my left side my, my coming in from the negative. So my finger follows the graph and it approaches 1. y is 1. Okay, so at x is 1, y is 1 when I come in from the left side. The limit of my function as x approaches 1 from the positive side. What does that equal? So if I come in here, again now, I'm not coming in from the left anymore, so this means nothing to me. All I care about is over here. What is my graph doing when I approach it from the positive side? So I come in, my finger is heading, it's no longer heading towards 1. Now my finger is following the graph and it's heading towards 3. Okay, so from the right side or the positive side, I'm coming in and it heads towards 3. If you notice, these are not the same. Okay, they're not the same. So if I have the limit of my function, as x approaches 1, there's no positive or negative behind it. It means now it says, I want to know, does the limit exist if I approach from both sides at the same time? So watch. If I'm approaching from both sides at the same time, notice my fingers are not going to the same place. Right? They're going to two different places. Left side, it's going to 1. Right side, it's going to 3. They don't match. There's no place that my fingers come together. So when you have that example, you have what's called does not exist. In other words, the limit is not there. There's not any one point that my, my graph is approaching at that particular point. Now, if I said over here, that's a different story. All I care about is this particular x value when x is 1. I come in, it does not go to the same place, so my limit does not exist. What does my function equal? at x is 1, it equals the value 2. So again, there's your algebra. All of the limits is your calculus. So it's what is it approaching. Okay, so that's how you find limits graphically. Follow the fingers. If your fingers come together, the limit exists. If your fingers are going to two different places, the limit does not exist. But you can have a limit from the left side and you can have a limit from the right side. But coming in both places, or both from both positions, both right and left, if my fingers don't come together, the limit does not exist.